So the Bitcoin halving happened <coughs> yesterday morning. I actually slept through it, which uh, <laughs> it's a bit annoying. But um, yeah, it's interesting. I've been trying to explain it to <coughs> like <coughs> people who are not in the community, or um, maybe just friends and family who sort of don't have any understanding of it. And like when you start talking about the um, the happening in terms of creating scarcity I kind of realize that they, they they don't even know what that means and like why that's important um, and yeah like hardening and, and like that, that sort of thing like it comes across as buzzwords to them quote unquote buzzwords like made by the Bitcoin CEO to cry to try and get people to buy more Bitcoin or something <laughs> It's really funny and then you like start explaining no it's open source software and it's a, a mathematical equation and an algorithm that runs regardless of whether people um, think it's important or not sort of thing um, and yeah that concept's really hard to get across and so like I realized that yeah it's because they got no financial literacy to begin with so you gotta kind of take it all the way back there and I was like thinking well how do you explain scarcity to people that have lived in a system that's just constantly losing value all the time like fiat loses value um so your buying power is just going down constantly but they've just been born into that they've never known anything else so to them it's just yeah well that's the way things work sort of thing so i was thinking about it like the i think the best way to or one of the best ways to get that concept across is just like remove the idea of money so I was thinking like, all right, so if you had a state or a government or a country that said, uh, from now on, because I know everybody likes ice cream, from now on, everybody can only eat ice cream and every household will be given um, a thousand bricks of ice cream and you have to keep it in your, your freezer and then that's what you have for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Do you think that, one, do you think you'd like ice cream still after, I reckon, like two days, three days? I think people would get start getting sick of it. But everyone has it in their house. So do you think it would be more valuable or less valuable because more people have it sort of thing? So I think that might be the way to explain it to people um, and then replace the, the concept of ice cream which i think everyone can understand is bad for your health if you have too much of it and if there's abundant abundance of it it's going to be less valuable you're not going to be able to do anything with it um replace that with pieces of paper with dead criminals printed on it instead so the more you have of that printed off do you think that's more or less valuable so i don't know i was just thinking about it i think maybe that's the way to explain it to people but even then, they're, they're still kind of like, there's a disconnect, because they're just like, well, what do you mean? Like, but you, you have to use money. How, how else am I going to pay my mortgage? AKA death promise. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's strange. It's really, uh, it's an interesting, interesting um, study, I suppose, in like looking at, even, even people who kind of think they know economics, um, particularly people who've gone to university, and quote unquote studied economics. They've studied this weird Keynesian idea that debt is wealth and um, they like, and, and debt is an asset somehow. It's bizarre, really bizarre thinking. Um, but they're all kind of trapped in that mindset and they can't think outside of it. So I was thinking if we just reduce it all to ice cream, <laughs> it might be the way to get through to people. But anyway, just a thought.